Hello again, everybody. Of course, this past week we did find out that we don't get to go back to school for the rest of the year. And I'm kind of sorry about that because I really do miss all of you guys and I wish I could see you in person again. But we'll make the best of things as we go through the rest of our year. Hopefully you remember that last week we were talking about circles. And a circle, of course, just meant all the points that were the same distance from a given point. We learned lots of different terms last week. We learned things like the radius is just a segment from the center to the edge of a circle. The diameter went all the way across. A tangent intersected a circle at one point. A secant was a line that intersected it at two points. And a chord was a segment that connected two points on a circle. The diameter was actually the largest chord in any circle. We also talked about arcs, which are parts of circles, and we're going to learn more about arcs today. A minor arc was just less than half a circle, and a major arc was more than half a circle. And we learned last week that a semicircle was exactly half a circle. We talked about measuring arcs last week, and we figured out that a minor arc always had the exact same measure as the central angle that formed it. And you could find out how big a major arc was by just taking 360 minus the minor arc. So all of that was stuff that came up last week in our notes. So this week we're going to review a couple of ideas that go back to middle school or even grade school and then extend them just a little bit. First thing I want to remind you of is the idea of circumference. Remember circumference is just how far it is all the way around a circle. It's exactly the synonym of perimeter, but we typically use circumference when we talk about round things and perimeter when we talk about flat things. You probably remember from junior high a couple of formulas that you can use to find the circumference of a circle. One of them is pi d, or pi times the diameter. And the other one says 2 pi r, or 2 times pi times the radius. Both of these actually just come from the definition of pi, which is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. And so again, pi d or 2 pi r you can use to find circumference. One thing that I will ask you to do this week is to find some circumferences. And this particular screenshot comes straight from somebody else's quiz. It says, what's the circumference of this circle in terms of pi? Well, they give us that the radius is 30 inches. So I want to think of 2 times pi times the radius, and I'm pretty sure the right answer has got to be 60 pi inches. Here it asks us to figure out the circumference to two decimal places. I'm going to pause for just a second here and let you think about that and see if you can figure it out. This time they're telling us the diameter is 8, and since we know that, we don't need to multiply by 2. It's just pi times the diameter. You notice I typed into the calculator 3.14 times 8, and I could say that to two decimal places, the circumference must be 25.12 centimeters. And here's one that's sort of phrased as a story problem. It says a pizza has a circumference of 50 and a quarter inches. We want to know what size of pizza it is. So again, think about that for just a second, and we'll see what happens with it. ends up being an algebra problem. They're giving us the circumference, and the size of a pizza would be the diameter, so we need to find d. Well, pi d equals 50.25, and to solve that for d, what I've got to do is divide by pi. If you look at the screenshots there, I actually did this problem twice. I divided by literally the pi key on my calculator, and then I just divided by 3.14. If you look at both of these, you'll notice that 
one of them is just slightly below and one is just slightly above 16, but we're going to say it's a 16 inch pizza. Going right along with circumference is the idea of arc length. Arc length is the number of inches or centimeters or feet or meters or whatever length you're looking at, number of units that make up an arc. Now that's actually different from the measure of an arc that we talked about earlier, which is always done in degrees. Arc length is in units of length, like inches, and measure is in degrees. So you do want to be careful of what they're asking on questions like that. Right here is the basic formula you use to find arc length. And if you look at it, all it is is the circumference formula, 2 pi r, times theta over 360. Theta is just how big the angle is that forms this arc. And what I'm really doing is I'm finding out what fraction of a circle this arc is. That's what theta over 360 gives me. And I take that times the whole circumference of the circle. So 2 pi r times theta over 360. Here's a question where you're asked to find the arc length, and what I need to do is figure out what part of the circle I'm looking at, and then take it times 2 pi r. Now you can type that stuff in in any order. Here I did 45 divided by 360 first, and then I took that times 2 times 3.14 times 12. If I wanted to, what the formula I showed you a minute ago literally said is that I'd take 2 times 3.14 times 12 times 45 over 360. The order, again, doesn't matter. What does matter is that you end up putting both parts together, and we end up with an arc length here of 9.42. This one is just a little bit trickier question, but I want to see if you can figure out how you would do this problem. You know, one of the things I do miss about having class at school is looking around the room and having people raise their hands to answer questions and see what they would do. This problem, what you're going to end up doing is, first of all, figuring out how big that major arc is. And I did that by taking 360 minus 79. The major arc, the blue arc in that picture, is going to be 281 degrees. So now, to figure out how long it is, I've got to take 281 divided by 360, and then I take that times 2 times pi times 5, the length of our radius that you're given in the problem. When I multiply that all together, I get about 24 and a half for my answer. The other thing I want to remind you of is the idea of area. And of course, anytime you find the area of anything, what you're doing is figuring out how many square units it is. You probably remember the area formula for a circle was pi r squared. Sometimes people will have trouble remembering which of the formulas is area and which one's circumference. Easy way to remember it is you measure area in square units, so pi r squared is the formula for area. Now I will mention just briefly on the side that technically when we find the area of a circle, it's really the area inside the circle or the area of a disk that's formed by the circle. That's because remember the circle is just the outside. It's just the points that are the same distance away from a given point. What we want to know though is what's inside it for the area and that's what we'll be finding. So a pretty easy question would be something like this, where it says find the area of this circle where I appear to have a radius of 22 feet. And all you do is take pi times 22 squared, and we end up getting something like 1520.53 feet. Exactly how you round answers depends on whether there's anything given in a problem to tell you that. When in doubt, though, a couple decimal places is usually good. And 
also, it's okay to use pi, it's okay to use 3.14 to approximate pi, unless there's something that tells you to do it otherwise. So yeah, here about 1520.53 feet would be my answer. And we get back to pizza again. It asks us, what's the area of a 12-inch pizza? Now the thing you've got to remember if they give you a problem like this is the 12 in a 12 inch pizza is going to be the diameter. So it's really half of that that I'm going to plug into the formula. I have a radius of 6 and what I did is I took 3.14 times 6 squared and I get just over 113 square inches. Another term I want you to be aware of that is important in this section is the idea of a sector. And a sector, it tells you, is a part of a circle, or a disk, the interior of a circle, that's formed by a central angle. So it's the inside of part of a circle. A sector is always bound by an arc and also by a central angle. So it's kind of like you're looking at a slice of pizza or a piece of pie. That's what you're really looking at for a sector. The main thing we're going to care about with sectors is finding the area of them. And just like the arc length formula, all I do if I want to find the area of a sector is I just take what fraction of a circle I'm looking at times the area of the whole circle. So theta over 360 times pi r squared. Now again, if I wanted to, I could do pi r squared and then take that times theta over 360. The order doesn't matter, but I've got to put both parts in there. So a pretty typical problem here. This circle has a radius of 7 centimeters, and we're supposed to find the area of a sector that's formed by a 100 degree angle. So think about that for just a second, and then we'll look at what the answer is. Again, I just take what the angle is, 100, divided by 360, and then times pi, times the radius squared, so times 7 squared at the end, and we do end up with about 42.74, and that would be in square centimeters would be the unit I'd label it with. And this question says, if the radius of this circle is 6 centimeters, what's the area of the yellow sector? Again, think through that for a minute, see if you can figure out what's going to happen with this one. What makes this a little bit harder is that the yellow sector is associated with a major arc. And the first thing I did is I took 360 minus 45 to figure out that that major arc is 315 degrees. And then what I'd have to do is take 315 divided by 360 times pi r squared, so times 3.14 times 6 squared, and my answer is going to be almost 99 centimeters, 98.91 centimeters. So nothing too earth-shattering this week, but I do want you to remember how to do the circumference of a circle, 2 pi r, the area of a circle, pi r squared. You want to know that you take a fraction times those if you want to find arc length or if you want to find the area of a sector. You're going to have some problems to practice that and, of course, as usual, a quiz that sums everything up this week. So that's where we're at. Have a good week, and we will see you again.